Good morning, good morning, family. Good morning, Facebook family, YouTube family. Good morning. I am here this morning one more time. It is time to feed your spirit. It is Wednesday. It's a blessed Wednesday that the Lord has made. And you and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh. Isn't it worthy? Isn't our God so worthy? He's so worthy. He's so wonderful. He's so amazing. He is a good God. Hallelujah. I'm worshiping him. Worship him with me together. Let's lift him up. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. He is wonderful. He is worthy. your children. He has kept your life. He has kept your grandchildren. He has kept your businesses. Even the way the, the world is going right now. Everything is so chaos that the, the country is going somewhere. Only God is able to sustain us. And we have every right to worship and to adore him. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be with you for that long. I'm just coming to feed your spirit with the word of God. I am just here this morning to feed your spirit, to keep your spirit alive. Because it is your spirit that will keep you going. The things that you cannot see are temporal. But the things we cannot see, they are permanent. And that's what you are. You are the spirit man. You are a spirit being. You live in the soul, but your spirit is so well in you. Hallelujah. This morning, one more time, let's worship the Lord. This morning, if you haven't worshipped him yet, because you are so busy, take a moment and let's worship the Lord together. He is wonderful. He's amazing. He's great. His love for you is internal. It's everlasting, unconditional love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh. Hey. Makole bozeke tebaya. You are Jesus. You are worthy.
Because he's good. He's worthy. Last week, feed your spirit. I talk about believing and not seeing. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between looking and seeing. The Bible said, I don't want you to look before you can believe. I don't want you to see before you can believe. Don't be like Thomas. He said, blessed are those who does not seen, who have not seen, but yet believe. And I'm going to talk a little bit, just a little bit about the difference between looking and seeing. And if God doesn't want you just to see, what is, is he talking about? Because there's a difference between you are looking, looking with your natural eyes. When we look with our natural eyes, we can see just a little about the things that we can see and the things that we can touch. But when we see with our natural, with our spiritual uh, uh, eye, if we can see with our spiritual eye, then we can see deeper. We can see the things of God. We can see the things that God has already planned for us. We can see our the visions that God has already planned and purpose for our life. So there's more of just looking and just seeing. But today, God wanted to remind you, to let you know, that I don't want you to see with this your, your natural, your physical eyes. Because the physical eyes that you look at things are going to be temporal there are things that you can see and everything that we can see can be can be temporary it, it can be destroyed it can go it can vanish you can have a house today and you might not have it tomorrow you can have a car that you can see today but tomorrow you cannot see it anymore but if you can see the things that god wants you to see with your spiritual eye those things are internal the blessing that God has for you, the, the favor that God has for you, when you can see them with your spiritual eye, you can see them to manifest. Then your belief and your faith will mature. Let's go to Matthew. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to be reading from verse 16 and 17. Amen. Matthew chapter 13. Feed your spirit. Matthew chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. And this is what he says. Well, let's read from 16. As a matter of fact, let's go to 16 and 17. Matthew 13, 16 and 17. And he reads, But blessed are your eyes, for they see. And your eye and your ears, for they hear. For 17. For verily I said unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not even heard them. Hallelujah. Let me read again. Matthew 13, 16, and 17. But blessed are you. But blessed are your eyes. For they see. And your ears. For they hear. For verily I said unto you. That many prophets and righteous men. Have desired to see. Those things which ye see. And have not even seen them. And to hear those things. Which ye hear. And have not heard them. This, are, this is a past tense. So blessed are those who have ears to hear. And ears to hear and eyes to see. But they did not see. You know why those righteous men and those prophets in the Old Testament in the time of old. That they could not see and they could not hear the things that you and I can see. And you and I can hear. Because they don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in them. So what God, when God is telling you, when the scripture is telling you that I want you to see with your spiritual eye and hear with your spiritual ear, because you have the Holy Spirit in you, that will help you to see the things that you cannot see in the natural. 
Glory be to God. And hear the things that you cannot hear in the natural. The, the prophets of the old and the righteous men don't have what you have. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. They don't have what you and I have. You know why? Because we have Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Spirit in us. And the Holy Spirit in us enable us to see the things that we cannot even see. To hear the things that we cannot see with our natural eye. So when God is telling you believe and not see, many believe and not see with your physical eye. Because when you want to use your physical eye to see things, you cannot go nowhere. You can see nothing. You can't even perceive the things that God wanted you to see. But if you can tap into the spirit realm, hallelujah, and look at things and understand things in the spirit, that it, sometimes you might not have money in your bank account. In your bank account, physical, you don't have anything. But in the spirit, you know you already got it. Glory be to God. That's how you believe God for the, the impossible. That's how you believe God with the impossible, with the miracle that you want, with the miracle that you are seeing God. You have to see it beyond what you are seeing. You have to believe beyond what people are saying. You have to believe beyond where you think you can go. Glory be to God. He said you have no idea how the old prophets, they desire, they wanted it. They, they are so much desiring to have what you have now. And, what you, and you're not even using what you have. God said, do you even know what you got? That the things that I have given you, the ear that I have given you, the eyes that I have given you, those prophets in the old, the righteous people, they don't even have it. So this morning, Wednesday, midweek, God has come to drop a nugget in your spirit to let you know you are more than you think you are. You can be more than where you, where you think you can be. You can have more than what you think you can, you can have. If only you can use your spiritual senses. Hallelujah. Don't even want it to, to be able to see the things that you can touch and feel. I spoke to it about last week. I said, if you wanted to see the things that you want to see, you will not go anywhere because the belief, the God that we have, the faith that we have in Christ, is a supernatural. We, we, we became born again. It's supernatural. That is an amazing thing. Salvation is so amazing. That at your age, you will become born again. Is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. That you can receive the blessings of God. That you can receive the things of God. That you can be able to go through your challenges in this world. Don't look at your physical. Don't look at the things that you think you have. Don't look at and, and, and see things in the, in the spiritual realm. Because you are a spirit. And you have that ability to be able to tap into that spirit realm. And to see the things the way, the, the way you can ever, ever imagine. You don't have it right now. No. It's just right now. But in the spirit you already have. You are more than conqueror. You, are, you have all the riches. Jesus became poor so you become rich. He died so you can have life. Everything else that you need is already done. You are who God says you are. Hallelujah. The promises of God are yes and the amen. Stop looking. And start seeing. And start seeing and looking and seeing it in the spiritual. With your spiritual eye. And here. When you're reading the word of God, when the word of God comes to you, don't even listen to it with just a, with the mere ears that you are listening. Tap into the spirit so that your spirit man will be awakened to be able to hear, to be able to receive the things of God and the things that God has already prepared for you. Stop looking in the natural Stop looking in the physical and start looking and stop seeing 
in the spiritual, in the spiritual realm, because you are a spiritual being. I said, because you are a spiritual being and God has created you in his own image. This month of May, the blessings of the Lord is over your life. And whatever the enemy has planned against you, I want you to, whenever you get into the word of God, I need you to be able to get into the word of God. And once you get into the word of God, use your spiritual intellect to read the word and ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to give you a revelation of himself. Yeah, a deeper meaning of what God, what are you saying to me? What are you telling me now? Because when I'm looking at the physical, things will never get done. I will never get to where I want to get. I will never be what I wanted to be. But if I can tap into the spirit, if I can tap into my, spirit, my spiritual being, then I'll be able to see that all the trials and the temptations that are coming before you, that is all around you, God is allowing those things to come to you because he has something better. He wants you to look at yourself in the mirror and see the better you, the new you that God has in for you. Glory be to God. Whatever God has for you and your children, whatever God has for you in your business, whatever God has for you in your community, whatever God has for you in your life, whatever God has for you in any area of your relationship, look at it in the spiritual realm. Because the attack sometimes, you'll be like, what is all this attack coming from? David said, I am for peace. But when I speak, they are for war. People sometimes will not understand you. It's okay. They don't have to understand you. Because you are not like them. You are not operating in your realm of spirit where they are. You are in a different dimension. You are in a different realms of the spirit. So the enemy will attack you because God is getting ready to take you to a new level. So those attacks... Those issues and problems will come to you to deviate you, to distract you. The enemy knows so many ways he can use to distract your attention from your course. To focus on what God has planned for you, what God has, has in store for your life. There is always going to be a distraction. But I want you to see it with your spiritual eye and know that it's something bigger. It's greater than what you are seeing even now. My God. How do you see your children? How do you see how do you see them? How do you see their life? Are you looking at it and seeing it as they are right now, as what they're going through right now? Or are you looking at it and seeing it in the deeper way? That God, you have something amazing. That's why my son is going through what, what he's going through. That's why my daughter is going through what he's going through. That's how that's why my husband is going through what he's going through. That's why my job is going through the way he's going through. Because God, you have something bigger for me. You have a purpose for my life. And the enemy can take it. The enemy can handle it. But God, I know you know the purpose for my life. I know the plans that you have for my life. So you're not looking at things in the natural. But begin to see the things in the spirit realm. And start giving God thanks. As I start giving God all the praise and glory for the place that he has placed you. The, 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 the dimension that you are in even right now. The position, the space that you are in right now. Say, Lord, I thank you even in that space that doesn't feel comfortable. It, but you have to remember that gold comes from pressure. Hallelujah. Without the pressure, you can see the gold, the way it is sparkling. You can see, we have to go through the pressure. So sometimes you have to go through the pressure. And when you are going through the pressure, I want you to see it with your spiritual eye. I want you to hear things with your spiritual ear. And God to give you some understanding. And know that, uh-oh, this is not just a mean thing that is happening. This is not just a thing that is, the enemy has something for me. But God has something bigger for me. Hallelujah. God, you have something greater for where I am, for the things that I'm seeing, the things that you wanted things to come in the place in your life. 
But it's like everything is spreading all over. But God, I need you. Help me to see the things the way you see it. Help me to understand the way the things are going like the way you understand. Help me to perceive those things like the way you want me to. Believe that God is for you. Believe that God still loves you. He said he loves you and he loves you to the end. He gave you an internal life. He didn't give us a life forever. No, an internal. Internal life is greater. It's internal. There's nothing beyond it, above and beyond it. It is internal. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will never perish, will have an internal life. That internal life that he gave you. You are his beloved. He loved you so much. So whenever you're going through trials and you, you're going through your trauma, you're going through all those calamities, remember, I want you to remember today that there is something bigger. I want you to see the things bigger and greater than what you are just seeing. Because whatever you are seeing, they are temporal. But the things that you will never be able to see, that you can tap into the spirit, to see it in the spiritual realm, they are permanent. Hallelujah. My word for you tonight, this morning. I want you to start looking at it differently. Look at your situation differently. Look at it. See it. See it differently. See it with your spiritual eye. See it the way God wants you to see it. And let it be the way God has already intended it to be for your life. Not only for your life, but for your ministry, for your home, for your family, for your children, for your business, for your finances, for your relationship. I want you to see it more beyond what you are seeing even now. God said, I want you to see it. But don't look at it. See it. When you see it, with your, you know the prophets are called seers. Because they can see. The supernatural. Glory be to God. Tap into that spirit. You can have the Holy Spirit who is always there with us. Jesus said, when I send him, he will show you all things. Glory be to God. And he will bring all things into your remembrance. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. This day, feed your spirit with the word of God. Feed your spirit. And knowing, having the knowledge of seeing things beyond the way you see it. And if you are looking at it the way you are looking at it and you don't understand it, tap into the spirit and ask the Holy Spirit, Daddy, please show me. Give me a deeper revelation. Give me the meaning. I want to get to the bottom of it. And trust me. He will. Because that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to see it differently. He wants you to see it deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper to it. And God will take you. The Holy Spirit will take you deeper. To reveal everything that is in it. And guess what? He will take you. To your expected end. Hallelujah. This is the word from the Lord to you. For today. Mid Midweek. Feel, feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. As you feed your natural spirit, your natural man, with every food, everything that you can, you can get. This morning, I know you already have breakfast, and you're getting ready to have lunch, and you're going to have dinner. You're eating and, and feeding your flesh. What are you feeding your spirit? I, I came to give you. A meal that was not prepared with hands. Hallelujah. A meal that is called the word of God, who is, which is God himself, Jesus himself, is the word. Now, blessed are those 
who is just looking but yet believe how can you just look or you're not looking or you're not seeing and believing how you believe it because you're seeing it with your spiritual eye you just look at it in the natural it doesn't work it would never make any sense but you have to go deeper and look at it in the spiritual sense and when you look at it in the spiritual sense it will make it will make a difference for you in your life that's trying to see with your spiritual eye and hear with your spiritual ear and that's why life will come to a full circle in your life that's why things will start to make sense for you in your life that's why you'll be able to see things different way you understand things differently because now you are tapping in into the deeper level of your understanding in the word of God and asking the Holy Spirit to work with you. Glory be to God. So all things is already been made perfect and it's already been made possible for those that believe. Why? Because they listen and they hear from their spiritual senses. I love you. I thank you for this afternoon. I'm not going to stay that long. Just a little nugget. Keep on to the word of God. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Try to see it with your inner man. Hallelujah. With your spirit. When I say inner man, I mean your spirit that is inside of you. You yourself, your spirit. This body is just a clay. Yourself, your spirit man. Start looking at it. And listen to things in that manner that God wants you to. May God bless you. I pronounce spirit of blessing. Hallelujah. The spirit of blessing. Did you hear that? I don't know where that come from. But the spirit of blessing. In other words, the blessing that the spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring to you. Not the blessing that comes from man. Glory be to Jesus. The blessing that come from God, that come from the Holy Spirit. The blessing that when he walks with you and he talks with you and he guides you, that he's able to release those things into your life. I release that blessing that comes from the Holy Spirit into your life. To be able to lead you in all your ways, in all your endeavors. That all shall be well. Today, receive the love of God. Today, receive the sources that come from the, from, from the Spirit of God. Today, wealth belongs to you. Prosperity belongs to you. Good health belongs to you. Glory from God belongs to you. When they see you, they will see the glory of God. Prosperity is your portion. Healing is your portion. Healing is the bread of God. Is the bread for the children of God. Receive your healing. Receive your, your, your blessing today. May you be the head and not the tail. You will always be above and not beneath. And the blessing of the Lord will chase you down. Just like he said in the word, that goodness and mercy shall follow you. Glory to God. The goodness of God will continue to follow you, to shadow you, to overcome every obstacle, to give you the strength to fight every battle because you are just going to show up on the field. You're just going to show up on that battlefield because you are not the one who is going to fight. Jesus is your fighter. Jesus is your winner. Jesus is your conqueror. And he will make sure that victory belongs to you. I love you guys. May God richly bless you. Anyone that is listening right now, I thank you for your time and your efforts and your support and your trust and believe in me that the word of God that is coming out of my mouth is not my word, but it's the word that comes from heaven. I thank God for your life. I bless you from effort with every blessing that comes from Jesus. May you be blessed. 
May the glory of God continue to shadow you. May the love of God continue to be abundant in your life. May everything that you have desired, everything that you are praying for, everything that I never leave this thing alone, anything that you are believing God for, for your children, for your life, for your ministry, for anything that belongs to you, anything that concerns you, God said I should tell you that everything that concerns you, he's already made it perfect. You don't have to worry about it. I want you to see it with a different eye, to understand it with your different understanding, to hear it with a different ear and with the spirit of God. I love you. I love you. I love you. We'll do it again on Saturday. Same time, same place, calling on the name of Jesus, loving on him and trusting him in everything. I love you. Have a good day. Bye, y'all. Bye.